Such an interesting theme in the stories that you tell of both tradition and change. I mean, you've talked about pivoting and learning that your dream is the limit, but you also are talking continually about ancient traditions mm -hmm. and, and, the, and identity and heritage and how that plays in. So that, that interchange between what's continuing and what needs to be carried forward and how it needs to change. Thank you. It seems. Well, you, you well, do. Very perceptive questions. Very good. Go on. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you uh, remarked uh, at one time that the quality of your life is the quality of your stories. Yeah, that's very and good, I think right? we can. Um, that was one of my characters I created. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we can discern from this that the quality of your life is quite exceptional. So. Well, I, I, you know, I tell the students is, you know, the, in the class, and one of the ways of looking at it, is like I was just trying to do in writing, saying who, who's a, who likes in writing, who doesn't like writing. And I try to take the students who say they don't like writing, and I try to quick, do a quick little workshop exercise, which is um, we're going to do a competition. And the competition is this. I want you to look in the outside of the room and write down as many things as you see. And spelling doesn't count. Grammar doesn't count. Just the number of things you see. And what I'm getting at is writing begins with observation. And, I, and ultimately, I start showing them how little they see. How do you show them that? Oh, I think, well, for example, if we looked, and I went around the room, um, and, and this is just on a visual level. We get mm -hmm. on an auditory level, we get all, all these other levels. Mm -hmm. And I asked them to say, you know, list what you see, and it begins to chair, windows, lights. I say, that's all true. How, what, who, who got the highest number? And that's the winner. All right? Then it is, what, what do I see? Well, I also see. I see that. I also see rectangles. I see squares. I see lots of circles. I see trapezoids. And I say, that's what's really going on. Your mind's interpreting and limiting what you see because you call it an object. And then there's this breathtaking moment where you go, that's true. The next challenge would be to, if we did it, was to go outside and walk through a landscape. What do you see? People see, and I say, that's not what you see. The reality is, when you're walking through a landscape and you can see the buildings and the sky, is everything is moving around you and you're standing still. That's the truth of what you perceive. It's an illusion to think you're moving and the world is standing still. The actual perceptive reality that you're misinterpreting is the world is moving around you as you go forward. And the buildings are shifting shapes and sizes and creating geometries against the sky because they're shifting position and perspective. That's the truth of what you see. It took me years to be able to perceive that. And you can now. You know, all the time. Does it, it gets make very, you dizzy? Yes, it does. <laughs> it you makes have me to be dizzy able to think about it. Yeah. Walking through New York is a <coughs> spectacular experience because it is a world of geometry shifting in emotion. Oh, yes. You have to make sure you don't get run over. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that is a way of seeing. Uh -huh. And I then challenge and I then say, my world is richer than yours because I see more. So you use a little bit of competition oh, yeah, to yeah. get people but the to point is, see more. And then the next step is, what do you see inside yourself? You know, and then finally, what do you begin to perceive in, inside, as well as the thoughts and the ideas, and how limited one is. And I love going to you know, religious